It's a meal prep weekend and some of the foods we are making today, we are going to start with our sourdough bread, then we'll move into some salad prep, tonight's dinner, and then we'll get to some roasted vegetables and making a pot of soup. Welcome back friends, my name is Keisha and I live an intermittent fasting lifestyle and today we have fasted 16 hours and for our breakfast we had beans, eggs, roasted brussels sprouts, a couple of pieces of bacon, and a cheese quesadilla with a low carb tortilla. I was particularly hungry this morning breaking my fast, um, but today was the last day of intermittent fasting. For the next week, I'm going to go off of fasting, so I wanna make sure I'm preparing some healthy meals and things to have ready to go in the fridge so that I'm not wanting to grab for a bunch of junk food. So we're gonna make sure we have some yummy bread to eat and some soup, some roasted vegetables, some salad mix, so that way whenever I need to throw something quick together, I have all the things I need. So we're gonna start with our sourdough bread. It's getting a little late in the day to start it. I usually try to start it a little earlier than this, so I'll probably be up kinda of late tonight getting it in the fridge for fermenting, but we're gonna start now. I've got, uh, I'll put the recipe in the description I'm not the best at making bread, but that's the best part about making bread is it is so forgiving. Even the worst loaf of bread comes out completely edible and super delicious. So every time I've made this on camera, it's kind of a flop. And then every time I've made it off camera, it comes out amazing and looks beautiful. So I, just, I don't know what it is. If it's the camera makes me nervous in the process and I'm, I don't know, maybe it's the weather, maybe it's... I honestly, I don't know, <laughs> but we're gonna start now. So I've got 500 grams of uh, all-purpose flour. I'm going to add in 450 grams of einkorn flour. And this is gonna make two bread bowls. All right, and I have uh, 650 grams of warm water. I'm just gonna quickly and loosely get this incorporated. All right, I probably don't really need to keep messing with it, but I'm not really trying to knead it or anything. I'm just trying to get it incorporated. There's a little bit of dry. Okay, we're gonna leave it. Now we're just gonna let this rest for about 30 minutes or so and uh, just let the flour kind of absorb all of the water. And then we'll go ahead and add the sourdough starter and the salt. Okay. Oh. Come on. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna clean up my hands. Since I am starting so late in the day and I don't wanna poop out, I do have to do the bread now that I've started it. So no matter what, that has to get ready to go in the fridge for fermentation tonight. But in the meantime, I'm gonna start dinner because I don't wanna prep all the other stuff we're not eating tonight, just in case. <laughs> so we're gonna have some chicken chili. So I've got my cabbage, onion, and my peppers here. I'm gonna chop these up. I already have the chicken ready and in the oven, so that's cooking. It's frozen chicken tender, so I just wanna cook it through enough to make sure I can chop it up, put it into pieces, and then throw it in the chili. You know what, maybe I should cut the cabbage first just so it's not, doesn't get like onion smell all over the whole thing because I'm not using the whole thing. Just gonna use like maybe a quarter? Half? Maybe a quarter. All right, we got the starter. It is getting warm in this kitchen, which is great for the bread. We're gonna do 200 grams of the sourdough starter. Okay, let's see if we could read it. All right. All right, clean hands, because we're going in. 20 grams of salt. And this is best done with your fingers. I'm gonna just kind of dimple in this 
starter. And I'm gonna start, get this sprinkled all over. I know it seems like a lot of salt, but it's really not, and the bread really needs it. I'm just gonna mix all this together so that the salt and the sourdough starter is well incorporated. So not really kneading it, just kind of squishing it around. Because I just want it to get all, all incorporated. I'll try to get this. And that's how you know it's incorporated. Your hands will be all sticky. And then you can try to get off as much as you can, but I just find it's easier to just rinse them off. And then we're gonna let this rest a little bit longer and then we'll start our stretch and folds. Um, I'm just gonna cover this back up and I'm gonna go stick it over by the stove, by the oven, because I have the oven on at 400 because I'm getting ready to make another bread. We're gonna make cornbread to go with our chili. We'll let this rest for about 20 minutes. All right, and I can link this recipe below too. It's a regular cornbread recipe, but I'm gonna make a few adjustments. Here's my prepared dish. Oven's already preheated to 400. I'm gonna use einkorn flour, cornmeal. All right, so regular cornbread recipe. I'm gonna go in though with einkorn flour, about a cup of that, and then, ooh, getting low on the cornmeal. Cup of cornmeal. I have some monk fruit sweetener here, and I'm gonna use two thirds a cup of that. Very dusty. We're going in with a heaping tablespoon of heaping tablespoon of uh, baking powder, a teaspoon of salt, unsweetened almond milk. I'm gonna do one cup. Avocado oil, third cup, and one egg. And that's it. I'm just gonna give this a mix until it's all incorporated. Super easy, Corn, cornbread is so easy to make. And then if you wanted to add stuff to it, jalapenos, some corn, like, you know, cheese, this is the time to do it. But I'm just gonna do plain old cornbread and we're gonna let the chili do all the talking. I'm gonna just pour this into our prepared baking dish. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And I'm gonna scrape out the bowl because I want all that cornbread. Practically lick the bowl clean. All right, according to my instructions, this will cook for 20 to 25 minutes. And I think in this pan, I think it goes about 20 minutes. All right, pan is preheated and we're gonna use a little avocado oil in the bottom. We're gonna add our chopped up veg. And we're gonna let this cook down for a few minutes. All right, I have my chicken here. It's seasoned with a little salt, but it's still pink. I'm just gonna chop it up so we can throw it in the chili and it'll finish cooking in the chili. All right, clean hands again, because now it's time for our first stretch and fold. And I'm gonna do this every 15 minutes the first few times, and then I'm gonna do it every 30 minutes for another three times. And I'm not an expert bread maker, so I don't really know why or what's the difference between doing it three times, six times, whatever, but this is just how I do it. This is, I follow the recipe, which is in the description. All right, get a little water on my hand, and I just grab a side and kind of pull it up and flop it over. And that's it, that's a stretch and fold. I do that a few times, or all the way around, and yeah, that's, whew, it's already making a nice little ball. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna let it rest again for another 15, 20 minutes. And we'll do that again. All right, I had just turned this off. Let's turn it back on. Now let's start adding our seasonings. Garlic, cumin, Chili powder, we're gonna go in with a good amount. Chili powder, oregano, 
little bit of crushed red pepper, a little bit more salt. We're gonna add the chicken and give it a stir. Here's the cornbread, yay. Okay, so that's done, that's gotta cool off now. Time for another stretch and fold. Clean hands. <laughs> oh, I might have to get another whole thing. Okay. Water. Looking good. All right. for another rest and then we'll come back and do it again in about 20 minutes. This is a process, but it's so worth it. I normally will get my turkey broth or chicken broth, but I'm using water tonight. Doing two cups. We're gonna let this come to a simmer and cook that chicken through. And to give it a little chicken broth flavor, I'm gonna use a little bit of this chicken bouillon. I'm just gonna use one cube and sprinkle that in. I really should get the powder jar kind. I don't use this too often, but when I do, it's, it's because I forgot to go downstairs and go get the chicken broth. And I don't wanna go downstairs right now. Now we're going to add corn and beans. These are just cannellinis. All right, that looks delicious. Add the cabbage. We'll let this simmer for a little bit and we'll check it in a while. All right, let's check it out. Ooh, look at that. Let's give the juice a little taste so that way, you know, if we need to add more seasoning. Mmm. Oh my goodness. That's perfectly seasoned. All right, to thicken this up, I'm just gonna smash these up a little bit. Smash up the beans. But lots of veggies, lots of protein, lots of fiber. I'm excited. And this is gonna taste good with the cornbread. It's gonna taste good with some tortilla chips, some cheese, some sour cream, whatever you wanna put on it. A little more hot sauce. Cause it's not spicy, it just has really good flavor. Well, the sun is definitely going down. It's not behind the mountain yet, but it's already starting to get darker in here. <sighs> time for another stretch and fold. I think this is time number four. Love it, love it. All right, little stretch and fold, and that's all there is to it. Okay, it's actually gonna be dinner time. Justin should be home any minute. So let's get some of this lettuce cut up and washed, and then we can kind of move on. That will be ready for when we want some salad, maybe tomorrow or the next day. I got like some of the last lettuce available in town. We hadn't had any food trucks coming in for a few days because the pass was closed. And that happens in the wintertime around here and we're just kind of stuck with the food we have. My salad spinner, put all that in there and wash it. Start on this one. So that was, this one's romaine. So this one's a little bit different. Mexican deliciousness though. 
I made dinner. So you did make Mexican dishes. I did. I'm wrapping salad stuff. Oh, I got cornbread to go with the chili. Chili? I haven't eaten yet either. I just figured I was still having some energy to get some more stuff done, so I figured I'd wash the salad. Am I supposed to get out sour cream? Uh, if you want, yeah, if you want sour cream. Am I supposed to get out jalapenos? If you want jalapenos. You got yellow. I guess if we're making dinner now. Is it dinner time? <laughs> yeah, it is. Am I supposed to get out an avocado? Uh, yeah. Or are you save those for salads? No, you can eat the avocado. Delicious. Did you try it? I made it with the einkorn flour, the monk fruit sweetener. Yeah, it tastes like cornbread. Did you try the um? The chili itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a delicious. Very tasty. All right. Put a little cheese on there. It's delicious, right? Sour cream. Oh yeah. Avocado looks amazing. Crown bowls. All right, some sriracha, and we'll do some cowboy candy. Cause delicious, why not? I'm gonna go grab a piece of cornbread too, but the bowl, so delicious looking. Crunch all that chips in there. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Mmm. Delish. I'm gonna yeah, go enjoy this. Good. I'm gonna go get some cornbread too. It's good, huh? Woo! Gotta flip the bread. Oh my goodness. I need to put some moisturizer on my hands. They're super dried out from washing them a million times. half an hour that'll be the last one. <sighs> oh, oh, I think. I don't know. I think that was time number five, yeah. So we'll do it one more time before we put it to bed. Actually before it's gotta rise double. Alright, I'm eating my dinner. Alright, the dough has doubled in size and let's see now we're on to the next step. Can see it. Oh. Yeah, this thing's hard to get out. <laughs> Split it without. gonna try to ball these up. those rest for a little bit. 
and then we'll come back and we'll get ready to put them in the fridge. These are just going to sit and kind of just dry off on the top for a little bit so that when I put them in the basket they have a better chance of not sticking. That's disgusting. Which part? The burpee. The burpee? Yeah. Uh, you mean like that? Yeah. Uh, or that? Please stop. Uh, excuse me. Alright, it's late. I want to go to bed and uh, so we got to get these breads in the bowls and in the fridge and gosh darn it, I didn't make any room in the fridge yet. <laughs> Let's worry about getting them in the bowls first though. So I do not have Bannatin baskets so I have some bowls lined with some cloth and the cloth is floured. So we're going to gently flop these babies in here. The most nerve-wracking part for me because yeah because I gotta get underneath it it is nice and dry on the top try to plop that in there all right that one went okay that one went pretty easily Next, we'll do this one. Put that there for a second. All right, next we'll do this one. Same thing, gotta get under it. Whoop. And flop that one in there. <laughs> I just, uh, I guess I can try to pinch them a little bit closed, a little bit better. I do not want to pop them at all. There's nice big bubbles in there and I want to keep those nice big bubbles. Now these are bottom side up. So I got plastic wrap and then I'm going to put a grocery bag over it as well. Just to make sure it stays pretty covered. I don't want the air to get to it and dry it out completely. Okay, that one's done. I'll cover this one. Someday I'll get Banneton baskets. But this has been working, so cover it up. Great, and then they're gonna go in the fridge for about 14 hours. So it's 10 p.m. now. I should get to bake them around noon tomorrow. So we will put those babies to sleep in the fridge and we'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, friends. I did not clean up last night, so I'm just cleaning up now. <laughs> it was late, 10 o'clock. I was ready for bed. <laughs> Keisha does not stay up late. Keisha likes to go to bed early. But usually bread making night is usually kind of a late night. I remember, I think it was the first or second time, I think it was the first time I made it. I was up until one o'clock in the morning with that bread because I didn't know. I didn't know how long it was gonna take me to prepare following that method. Maybe there's easier methods, I don't know. This is a method that generally works for me. Videos that I watch about Sourdough bread making, uh, there's all kinds of different ways you, to do it. So I'm just kind of going with the one that actually fits my style, I guess. <laughs> and it's actually the very first one I ever tried. So maybe that's why it fits. But it is, I've already been up for a couple hours. The sun is coming up today, which I love because uh, it is still very wintry here. Very, very wintry. Lots and lots of snow outside still. Today's the first day of over the next week that I am not fasting. So no intermittent fasting for the next week and this is kind of how um, I just kind of go with the flow, literally, 
to my menstrual cycle is how I fast. So I'm in the end of my cycle. So the last week of my cycle, I do not fast. And then we'll go into longer fasts once the cycle starts again. So, but we're at the end now. I'm in the beginning. I did a seven day fast, which was crazy. I mean, I can't even believe I made it seven full days without eating <laughs> or coffee. Oh my God. I think coffee was probably the hardest part. Anyways, I'm so glad. No, I get a whole week of eating though. I don't have to fast. I don't have to worry about fasting. The only thing I do stay mindful of is I still try to leave that two to three hour window in the evening of not eating before I go to bed. You know, while I'm gabbing here, I could be cutting vegetables that I could be eating. So let me do that. So, but I don't uh, have a set point in the morning for when I start eating. I pretty much just eat whenever I feel hungry. So sometimes I do end up intermittent fasting because if I have my last meal, say at 7 p.m. I'm done, I'm not going to probably eat at seven in the morning. I mean, it's just, it's not going to happen. <laughs> uh, I, I like eating breakfast in the morning. I just, I'm not usually even awake. <laughs> like the earliest I'm awake is by six. So by the time I have coffee and I, I'm not eating until like, you know, sometimes nine o'clock. Uh, the reason for fasting according to my menstrual cycle is to try to keep my hormones in check. So this has actually helped immensely. Even one of my doctors is completely like surprised that I've actually been able to maintain a regular cycle. The whole nutritional part of it, I'm trying to tweak a little bit according to what my needs are at this stage of life trying to keep my gut health in check, trying to keep my hormones in check. You know, all the nutritionists and doctors, they're like, you need so much fiber, you need so much protein, and you need to eat 30 different plant foods a week. And so trying to get all the fiber, all the protein, and all the plant foods in. Have you ever tried to eat 40 grams of fiber, 150 grams of protein, and a variety of vegetables all in one meal? I mean, could you imagine how huge that meal would be? for the early part of the cycle where I'm only eating one to two times a day. Sometimes I'll skip a day or two of eating. That's okay because then the rest of the cycle, I'm gonna eat two to three meals. So I'm getting plenty in during those other, during those last three weeks of my cycle. So the first week I'm fine. I don't worry about it too much. How much protein, how much fiber, how much plant food. I just try to eat low carb and uh, try to get as much protein and fiber into that time frame as possible. I should count how many veg I'm prepping because I've got to be at least halfway there, right? To the 30 different plant foods. So. And I wanted to do one sheet pan just full of all the mixed veggies. And then I had so much extra butternut squash and Brussels. I'm gonna do a whole nother sheet pan of just those two. And then these I'm gonna roast and maybe just stick in the freezer for a later date. But these are mostly gonna be for um, breakfasts or if I'm feeling froggy, then um, you know maybe we'll have them for dinner or something. But this is something that we've uh, come to really love. Uh, to start to do is just keep roasted veggies on hand. And I was buying those frozen bags of roasted veggies at Costco, but they're not selling them there anymore. So I don't know if you have them where you're at, but I really love those things. I would eat those every day. <laughs> so uh, avocado oil, right? Gonna be generous because that's how they get nice and roasty toasty. A nice amount of salt because I like my veggies tasty. And of course, generous with the black pepper as well. I'm gonna give these a mix. Try to keep them in the pan here. And I will go through halfway through cooking and give them a mix. And uh, yeah, 425. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how long they're gonna go. I'm gonna check them after about 15 minutes though and maybe give them a stir and then they might go another 5 to 15 minutes depending on uh, how roasted they are by then. 
And not me being impatient or anything, but I'm not gonna wait for those vegetables to be done to eat them for breakfast today. Maybe I'll eat them for lunch later, but I'm hungry now and I have some leftover mashed potatoes in the fridge and I have some bacon thought out. So I'm gonna have some bacon and eggs and uh, mashed potatoes. So yeah, that's what we'll be for breakfast today while those are cooking. Oh, while those vegetables are roasting still, I'm hungry, I'm gonna eat. Well, I'm, I'm so hungry, I don't know what to say. I'm gonna pop my egg yolk here and get it mixed in with my mashed potatoes. So I have three eggs, three pieces of bacon and a smear of mashed potatoes on my plate. Yeah, delicious. And always sriracha. Mmm. Mmm. Fantastic. I'm gonna enjoy this and we'll keep roasting veggies. All the roasted veggies are done now and I did end up taking out the Brussels sprouts a little early uh, from the second batch because in the first batch they got really dark, which is fine. I don't mind eating them really dark because I actually like them like that, but if I'm gonna put these in the freezer and then reheat them later, I don't want them to be already charred <laughs> to death. So, yummy. Mmm. This is gonna be so good. Mmm. Oh my gosh. Mmm. I don't even know that these are gonna last very long. I might eat them all right now. These are cooled off, I'm ready to go on the fridge. This just came out of the oven, and so I'm gonna let that cool down, and then I will stick this in the freezer, and we'll bag that up. I'll be ready to go for later. Continuing on with the weekend's food prep. All right, friends, our breads have fermented a little over 14 hours now. So we're ready to get them in the oven. The oven has been preheated with the Dutch ovens in there for about 45 minutes. So we are going to, this is always like the scariest part to me is now I gotta flip them out onto the parchment and get them in the bread and get them in the, uh, and get them into the Dutch ovens. Just cause I'm gonna just lightly flour the bottom. Oh jeez, Louise. Ah, <laughs> oh my gosh. Ah, uh, it's so flat. <laughs> it's so flat. All right. Sprinkle a little on top there. Okay, we got this one out. A little flatter than I want it to look, but you know, it is what it is. Let me get this one out. Try it. This is how I normally do it here. Ha ha. Woo! There you go. Uh, pull this off very gently. That looks a little better. I didn't flatten it out with my hand, but it's still. Okay, dusting, and then, oh, and then we're gonna score the top. <laughs> and I'm simple, I don't do like, crazy anything. I'm just gonna do one line down the middle. This one I'll do kind of a X or a, just kind of four lines through this one. All right, let's go get the Dutch ovens out and plop them in. Thick gloves on and whew. Oh, pull this one out and this one out. Oh. Carefully take the lids off. Oh. Definitely watch your face and we drop them in. Very carefully. So we do not want to get burnt. 
All right, and I'm not even gonna touch anything else. We're just gonna leave it just like that. The bread will come out how it's gonna come out. Put the lids back on. And I cook these at 475 for about 25-ish minutes. minutes I'm gonna take the lids off very carefully though because the steam does come out oh. here's a little preview it's looking beautiful very carefully take that one off There you go, back in for 20 minutes. All right, I'm gonna start prepping for my next thing, which is we're making soup. So yesterday we did a chili, so now we got some leftovers of the chili. Today we're going to make soup. And we're making minestrone because I feel like whenever I make fresh sourdough bread, I just need a really nice, yummy, hearty soup to go with it on the first day when it's fresh. Theme here for extra meals is we're gonna be having some soup and salad and fresh bread. So I'm super excited about that. So I already have carrots cut up from, I don't know, last, like a while ago. I don't know how long it's been, but my husband cut these up a while ago. So we've got carrots already. Now we're gonna start with some celery. Veggies are ready for the soup. All right, so I made a list of all of the plant foods that I would be eating this week for sure. And I made it to over 30, so I was actually kind of surprised. So the plant foods also include the spices and herbs that you're using in cooking, which that helps get you to that 30 number. And I didn't even add like some things I probably use, like some nuts or seeds. Um, so I just kind of went through the menu of everything I put in the chili, in the roasted vegetables, in the soup I'm making today, in my salad. I have another meal that I'm going to make this week. It's like kale, mushrooms, and some spaghetti squash. And then um, just the regular stuff I eat, like I had potatoes this morning. Usually I'll have black beans with my breakfast or pinto beans, but I mostly have black beans right now, so they're gonna be black beans. Yeah, so just kind of, and I usually, and I didn't even add nuts and seeds, because I'll usually put that in my salad. I'll put some almonds or some sunflower seeds or something on my salad, so. Didn't even count that. So, and I came up with 32, so if I add seeds or nuts, it's 33. So, over 30 different plant foods. That's awesome, because that's what my doctor wants me to strive for, is 30 different plant foods in a week. So, there you go. <sighs> Feeling pretty good about that. Probably won't be that great every week, but this week we're hitting that mark and that's awesome. Yeah, bread's done. Woohoo! Did I turn it off? I did. I turned the stove off. I mean, the oven off. It's gonna take a while for the oven to cool down from that. I can't believe I forgot to turn down the temp. <laughs> that's fine. It's still gonna be delicious. The breads look amazing, they're still crackling. And yay, fresh soup and bread. <sighs> Does it get better than that? Um, next step is we can't have all this wonderful, delicious, healthy, vegetable-y food without having something sweet. So we're gonna make some cookies. I am glad I'm making all this food today because I'm gonna be pooped tomorrow. And I'm not gonna wanna cook. And guess what? I don't have to. I just have to reheat. 
right, we're getting ready to make dinner, which is our minestrone soup. I'm gonna use my bacon fat left over from this morning to start browning the meat. Just grab a spoonful. Using some lean ground beef. I season the ground beef pretty well and I'm just going to brown it up here and break it up and then I'm going to take it out of the pot so we can start the vegetables. We're going to add our, our veggies. Alright, so I added tomato paste and I put the, the ground meat back in. Brushed red pepper here. And then I think all I gotta start doing is I need to add the homemade chicken broth. Because you can never have too much garlic, in my opinion. Garlic. I have yet to find that I have added too much garlic to something. I'm gonna add a couple of bay leaves. cookies smell good. I'm gonna have to probably taste one here in a second. Let's get this up to a simmer and then we'll taste it for seasoning. Cookies are all done. They took about 10 minutes at 350. Oh maybe they're not done. They're pretty soft but last time I like over baked them and they only went 12 minutes. But there's no egg so we don't care right? Hmm. I'll put them in for a few more minutes but these are really good. They're definitely more peanut buttery. Mm. Highly recommend using a half a cup of peanut butter powder. Oh yeah, you gotta have milk with these cookies. <laughs> okay, back in they go. Mm. Okay, this is all seasoned up and salted just the way I like it. And we are going to add the rest of our veg, which is our cabbage. Actually, we probably should have added the pasta first, so. I'm gonna just do this all together then. We've got frozen peas going in. We got a half a pound of pasta. All right. Let's get this all mixed down, let this pasta finish cooking up, and we'll check it for. Uh, we're gonna probably have to add some more liquid, then I'll have to check the salt and blah, blah, blah. Look at how full that pot is though. I don't know how much more I can add. So let me let this simmer up for a few minutes and we'll come back and. Uh, should be done by then, right? Give it a taste test at dinner time. All right, friends. Oh, where are you, friends? There you are. Here's my bread. Ooh. All right, and the soup is ready. We tasted it, it's delicious. And uh, that's weekend meal prep. We got cookies going. We got soup, we got chili, we got roasted veggies, we got salad prep. We've got sourdough. So we're set for a few days of food. Thank goodness I won't have to really cook anything tomorrow because I'm pooped out from cooking. I don't want to cook anymore. All right, well, that's it for this weekend. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I love you so much. Bye.